Praise God, church. We thank God for the for another new day. I did the first reading from the book of John, John 19, 17 to 30. And I read. And he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of the sky, which is Aramic, is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote on inscription and put it on the cross it read, Jesus of Nazareth the king of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and it was written in Aramaic, in Latin and in Greek. So the chief priest of the Jews said to the Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews but rather, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What have I written? I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garment and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who it shall be. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the, the soldiers did these things, but standing by the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of the croppers, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple, whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother, and from the our the disciples took her to his own home. Uh, after, after this, Jesus, knowing that all was not finished, said to fulfill the scripture, I thus, a jar full of so, wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the so wine on a high corpse branch and hold it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the soul wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. That is the, re the end of our readings. My name is Eunice Faith Warenu Kiyoko, and I'm born again. May God's name be good fight. Praise the Lord. We want again to thank the Lord this beautiful Sunday morning that the Lord has given us and we want to thank him very much that although the gatherings in our church buildings are suspended the church continues because we are able to worship the Lord and even receive his message from our home or from where we may be and uh, we are continuing with our annual theme, Redigging the Wells. And uh, today's uh, theme is what shall I render to the Lord for all his goodness to me? What shall I render to the Lord for all his goodness uh, to me? Yes, our readings has been read uh, from Psalms 116, verse 12 to 19, and the second one from the book of Luke, chapter 19, 
verse 28 to verse 36. Today, it is a very important uh, for us as a church uh, because today is a Palm Sunday and this marks the beginning of the Holy Week and indeed the last days of Jesus uh, before he was crucified. He entered Jerusalem on a Sunday like today and indeed he entered as a king riding on a donkey and the riding on a donkey signifies that he was coming as a king and he was coming as a peaceful uh, king because when he was coming in the other way normally the king would come riding on a horse today is also an important day for us as presbyterian church of east africa because every first Sunday of April has been set aside as a dance giving Sunday. And what a coincidence that even as we continue redigging, you know, the wells, that these two would come, you know, during the same Sunday. That is the Palm Sunday and the dance giving, you know, Sunday. And we are saying it is a, a good coincidence because. One of the things that we are supposed to be thanking God for is for his work, you know, on the cross, dying for us and therefore giving us eternal life. And although at times like now that we are uh, going through this very deadly pandemic virus, coronavirus, at a time that probably many people think we have nothing to thank God for. There are many things that we can thank God for. There are many things that the Lord has done even surrounding the virus because it could be worse than it is at this particular time. The psalmist, you know, as he writes this very popular book, he's saying, what shall I lender unto the Lord for all his goodness to me? What shall I lender unto the Lord for all his goodness to me. This is uh, verse 12 of Psalms 116. Uh, and the psalmist is saying this because he is able to count a number of things that the Lord had done for him. If you actually read from verse 1, we read from verse 12, but in your own time, if you read from verse 1, you will realize that the psalmist was praying. He had prayed to God because it is seems that he was sick and it was not just a normal sickness. Probably maybe it was like a deadly virus that we are experiencing this time because it was a disease that was threatening his life the way he actually knowledge. And therefore he's saying, since you have delivered me from this sickness, you have listened to me and you have answered my prayer. He's asking, now what shall I lend unto you? What shall I lend? What can I do to this Lord so that he feels that indeed I am thanking him and I am grateful to him for delivering me from this, you know, the deadly diseases. And in the same way, learning from him. If you look at our life, maybe from the time we were born to date, we have a lot of things that we can be able to tell the Lord, you know, thank him. We, we have a reason, actually, so to say, to ask the very same question that the psalmist is asking. What shall I lend unto the Lord for all his goodness uh, to me? And just citing a few of them, the Lord has given us life. Yes, there may be up and downs, you know, in this life. And the problem may be in our own human thinking, it is like, you know, the bad has been uh, too much. But if you look at it critically, there are many things that he has done for us. He has given us life. We are alive today. Yes, there is this virus, probably maybe other kind of sicknesses. But the Lord has sustained our life and we are able to enjoy it. Yes, we have good families. The Lord has given us, 
you know, good families. Yes, some people may say my family is not as good as I may want it to be, but you have a family. You have, you know, you have a spouse, or maybe you have children. Maybe you have your parent. We have what we can call our families, and we are able to enjoy when the world push on us from all sides, we can't be able to go back to our families. Yes, the Lord has blessed us with uh, sound health. Even at this time, yes, that the people uh, feel threatened. At this time that people feel uh, that, that they live with a lot of fear because of this deadly, this pandemic, you know, disease. But the Lord has given us uh, good health. It, it could have been, you know, worse. I have been thinking the other day, and I was saying, God, you have been so gracious to me. Now I'm old enough, and I've never been admitted, you know, to a hospital. I've never been, you know, uh, admitted to a hospital, neither any member of my family. And maybe many of you can also identify with me. You cannot remember the last time maybe you were admitted in hospital, you can remember, probably you have never been or any member of your family. And even if probably you have been ever admitted in hospital, probably not like other people. The other day I was talking to a family that uh, had their mother in hospital for months. The bill has collected to over 20 million shillings. The other day through our televisions, we saw a family that conducted a burial service for their son who was not there. They didn't have the body because uh, the, 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 the body is still in hospital. They cannot be able to raise, you know, the, the, the hospital uh, money that is required. Maybe you have never experienced such kind of a situation and you need to thank the Lord. Even when you feel some pain here and there, the Lord has continued to upheld you and it is not to an extent that probably other people have gone. Yes, we have food and other needs uh, uh, that, that we meet every day. Even this particular time that, you know, businesses are bad, this particular time that probably maybe people are not sure whether they will be paid their salaries, you know, or not, but we are still able to feed, you know, our families. We are still able to meet our day-to-day -day needs, and we need to thank the Lord for many things that he has, you know, he has done. You can think in your own ways. Yes, like now we are not able to come to church as we love doing every Sunday morning and other times, you know, during the, the, the week, maybe meeting with our district out there, but we can still be able to worship the Lord. We are able still to hear the word of the Lord that is coming, you know, from all direction uh, through the social media, through, uh, you know, online. We can thank the Lord. You can only imagine if there was this thing we call online, you can imagine how things will be at this particular time. But we want to thank the Lord that he has given us this platform. So we are asking ourselves like Zambes, what shall we lend up to the Lord? Or maybe to make it more personal as the Zambes did put it, what shall I lend up unto the Lord for all his goodness unto me? And number one, you know, when the psalmist looked at his life and he also uh, thought about it, he came up with three things that he thought probably that was the best thing to do to thank God uh, for the goodness that he has been. And I want to identify myself with these three things. I want also you to identify yourself with these three things. And number one, he is saying after all these things that the Lord has done, saving and delivering me from, uh, from death, from this, you know, very uh, bad disease. I can only receive, you know, his salvation. Saying this, you know, as he said, I'll lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. This may have been an actual cup lifted up and drunk at the uh, Thanksgiving feast. But the image also indicates that he can do nothing to deserve God's blessings or repay him for them. And therefore he's saying all we can do is gladly accept the salvation he has given us and continue to call on the name 
of the Lord and actually also rely, you know, on him. The reason why Jesus Christ came, and today we are saying it is the Palm Sunday when he entered Jerusalem and the Palm Friday, you know, he will be put on the cross. The reason why he came and sacrificed his own life is so that we can have eternal life, that we can have the salvation. And therefore, the best thing we can do to the Lord it is actually accept the salvation that he worked for us, the very same reason why he died on the cross. When we accept the salvation, we live in a way that constantly honors him. Yes, when we receive Jesus Christ, we live life constantly, all the time, that honors and actually pleases him. And verse 9 says, that I may walk before the Lord. That I may walk before the Lord. We also become his servant. Yes, when you receive the salvation, you know it automatically makes you a servant of God. And again, the psalmist in verse 16 is saying, Truly, I am your servant and express the desire to continue to serve him, you know, with his life. And this should be our desire too, because he desire that we actually serve him. The other thing that the psalmist, after analyzing his life and what God had done, you know, to him, as he answers himself, what shall I lender unto the Lord? He said, you know, I'll fulfill the vows. I'll fulfill the vows. Verse 14 of Psalms 116 says, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. And that again is repeated in verse 18. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. I was taught that if something is repeated in the word of God, it is an important thing to think about. So this one, the very same verse, it says in verse 14, and again it's repeated in verse 18. And this speaks of it important. It is emphasizing the same. You know, repaying, you know, fulfilling the vows. A vow is a promise. A promise to serve and praise God in a particular way after God's, you know, after one's prayer was answered. And so they come to the court of the house of the Lord and they prayed their vows. Yes, there are many promises that we have made. Like us, there are a lot of vows that we make. Well, during baptism, there are vows that we come and we, you know, we pronounce them before God and actually before the people. That's what we say. There are vows that, again, we say during the confirmation before we are, you know, we are introduced into the Lord's table. Again, when we are coming to marry, whether you marry in church or actually you marry out there because there are many ways people get married, but somehow, people make vows. Maybe to God, even though they are not in the church, and even to the spouse that you are getting married to. People don't just get into the house. And it is important to think seriously about those of us who came to church. There are vows that we make to each other, you know, before God and before the others. Again, when members are being commissioned to take various positions, of leadership in the church. There are vows that we make. There are other vows that probably may be a personal. Yes, probably like this time of pandemic, people could be telling God, if you help me and I don't and I'm not infected, this is what I will do to you. Others tell God, if you help me go to university and uh, finish, if, uh, if you help me to get a job, this is what I will do to you. Maybe the first salary, you know, I will give it to you. But many a times, after the Lord has done his part, we forget our part. 
And it is good to know that a vow is very, very important. And once you make a vow, you must fulfill it. Because God is very concerned. God, you know, take it seriously. Whether it is a vow between you and God in the church or even out there, maybe it is only you and God know it, or maybe it is with another person there, God take it seriously and you will better fulfill. That is actually why the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 5, 5, it is, it is better not to vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. So you have made a vow before the Lord, make sure that you will fulfill it because the Lord will follow you. Number three, you know, is the, the, the psalmist is saying, you know, what shall I lend unto the Lord? What will I do to the Lord so that the Lord will really know that I'm happy because of what he has done. And I also feel that I have fulfilled what I ought to have done. He said it is giving thanks, you know, to the Lord. Again, verse 17 of the same psalm says, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Let me read it again, it is important. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving, and we will call upon the name of the Lord. Giving thanks is to acknowledge that it is the Lord who has done it. Rather, you are saying it is not I, because I am not capable of doing anything. It is the Lord who has made it to happen. This is the doing of the Lord. So when you are giving thanks, this is actually what you are telling the Lord. We are who we are because of God. We have what we have because of God, not because of our hard work. No, we do not deserve it. But God, out of his grace and mercy, he has done them for us. Therefore, we need to thank him. Let us not just see what we do not have. Yes, but what we have. What we are not like, but what we are like. And give thanks to the Lord. In conclusion, we are saying what the Lord has done for us is so much that we cannot repay. The only thing we can make him happy is to be the kind of persons he wants us to be through which we can achieve through accepting his salvation, fulfilling the vows, and giving him thanks for us. May the name of the Lord be praised and as we continue thanking him. May we be blessed of him. Please remember to receive the salvation of the Lord. Yes, remember also to fulfill all those vows that you made. And remember to always give thanks to the Lord. Father, in Jesus' name we want to thank you that you have given us such an opportunity to reflect on many things that you have done in our lives. And we pray that you will help us that we may live the kind of life that you want us to be in accepting your salvation, in fulfilling the vows that you have made to you and to other people, and always living a life of thanksgiving. We thank you and honor you because you are our God and our King, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may the peace of the Lord passes our understanding, keep your heart and mind in knowing God and his son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessings of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you now.